today we are going to Devil's Tower in Wyoming. Do you ever wish that you could experience something you love as if it were the very first time again? Your favorite song, your favorite movie, or maybe even your favorite person. You see, we often chase those feelings we felt our first time experiencing our favorite things to no avail. Those moments usually catch us off guard when we least expect it, making them nearly impossible to manufacture or recreate. And I think that's the beauty of life. We never know when our next favorite moment will be. Well, what if I told you there's a place where your first time is every time? A place where you get the same butterflies in your stomach the first time you set foot there, all the way till the last time. A place where humans have been drawn for millions of years. Devil's Tower. My name is Carolyn McEntee and I am 56 years old, and I live in Julesburg, Colorado. My childhood was, um, it was good, a little hectic. There were six kids, and my father passed away when I was six, so my mother had her hands full. I always played outside and rode my bike and played in the mud, but as far as hiking and really enjoying the outdoors at a different level, my junior year in high school, we went on a trip to Glenwood Springs and we hiked to um, Hanging Lake. And I was in love from that point on. I enjoyed the fresh air, the smell of the pine trees. I mean, most of all, it was just the beauty, the beauty of the mountains, the trees, the water, the air, all of it. The memories that I've made enjoying the outdoors, they're just not replaceable. When I feel sad or whatever I'm feeling, I kind of go to those places that I've been. They're very soothing memories for me. Some of my best memories have been camping with my mom in many different areas in the San Juan Mountains of Colorado. One of the favorite ones is having the first sighting of a moose, you know, because I wanted it so bad and when it finally happened it was, it was incredible. I was so excited. Just that feeling of, I don't know, but kind of powerlessness, but powerful at the same time, you know, making that hike and seeing the wildlife. There's no secret why millions of people have been drawn to Devil's Tower. It soars high above the Wyoming Plains, nearly equaling the height of the Eiffel Tower from its base. Its sheer magnitude amongst the sprawling plains below it has attracted a variety of groups of people to marvel in its glory. The most important of these groups are regional indigenous tribes such as the Lakota and the Kiowa, who know the structure as Mato Tapila, which roughly translates to Bear Lodge. Many Plains tribes have ascribed ethereal and spiritual significance to the structure, 
designating Mato Tapila as one of the most spiritually profound monuments in North America. Although every tribe has a different oral history for Mato Tapila's origin story, most follow a similar pattern to this oral legend from the Lakota tribe. One day, a group of young Lakota girls were playing outside when suddenly they were spotted by a group of giant bears. With the bears rapidly approaching them, the girls prayed to the Great Spirit, the Lakota Supreme Being. The Great Spirit answered their calls, and the ground beneath the girls quickly rose into the sky just as the bears reached them. The bears tried to climb the newly sprouted tower to no avail, leaving heavy claw marks all along the monolith. As the tower continued to rise, the girls eventually reached the stars, where the girls were transformed into the Pleiades constellation. The spirituality of Mato Tapila for indigenous tribes can still be felt today, as many tribe members still initiate ceremonies and rituals at the site. The oral histories that survive from these tribes are integral to the identity of Mato Tapila and mark the beginning of the supernatural connection between humans and the tower. I met my husband on February 21st, 1997. We both worked at UPS, but we met at a nightclub in downtown Denver. Monty, uh, my husband, prior to our marriage was what I would consider to be very cocky, very flirtatious, and I was very attracted to that. He was willing to try new things, including camping, which he really wasn't very good at. <laughs> wasn't very good at fishing, but we attempted it. We attempted line dancing and two-step and three-step and all the exciting things that you try when you're in love. I felt like Monty was the one for me almost immediately. He knew before I did. I was hesitant because he seemed like a player, so I was a little hesitant, but I wouldn't say that it was love at first sight, but I would say within two weeks I knew. My experiences with Monty were up and down. He, <laughs> he made things exciting. He was constantly jabbing, teasing, poking, and would never give up. If he found something really funny, he would not stop laughing, even after it wasn't funny anymore. He would just keep laughing. We experienced a lot and very fast. We moved very fast in our marriage. We got married one year to the date that we met. Uh, we had our son Gunner within the first two years, bought a house, got a dog. So it moved very fast and it was a wonderful life together. As Manifest Destiny captivated the United States and its population, more Americans began settling the western frontier, uprooting many native tribes and severing their rich connections to spiritual sites like Mato Tapila. As a result, the identity of Mato Tapila was rewritten to suit the lifestyle of Americans expanding into the west. The monument was first designated as Devil's Tower after a translation error, forever associating the tower with traditional Western religion. From there, Devil's Tower was quickly molded into what America wanted it to be, starting with Theodore Roosevelt designating Devil's Tower as America's first national monument. This gave the site special protections on behalf of the American government, but also opened the door for Devil's Tower to become one of the premier rock climbing destinations in North America. Devil's Tower was now home to a new sense of American spirituality, one based on recreation, one that conflicts with its old indigenous roots. Devil's Tower had officially become American. Over 70 years after it became America's first national monument, a new chapter emerged in the legacy of Devil's Tower. Fresh off the release of Jaws, Hollywood director Steven Spielberg was in the midst of developing his next big project, Close Encounters of the Third Kind a science fiction film centered around interactions between humans and a mysterious extraterrestrial species. The movie follows Roy, played by Richard Dreyfus, a man whose chance encounter with extraterrestrials leads him to abandon his prior life in search of a mysteriously shaped object. Eventually, Roy discovers that this object is actually Devil's Tower, and upon driving to Wyoming, he discovers that the extraterrestrial mothership is docking at the monument. 
Roy observes a group of scientists communicating with extraterrestrials through music before he opts to board the mothership and finally leave Earth. Fifty years later, Close Encounters is still one of the most influential films of all time. While fans of the movie may never get to experience some of the more celestial aspects of the film, they do have access to one of the film's lasting legacies, Devil's Tower. The structure wasn't chosen for its inclusion in the film at random. Steven Spielberg and his crew were enthralled with Devil's Tower for the same reason that humans have been captivated by the monument for millennia. It was the perfect place for humankind to have their first encounter with an unfamiliar species, and it was the perfect place for Roy to reject any fear of what he didn't understand and to embrace the unfamiliar. After all, humans had been embracing the unfamiliarity of Devil's Tower for thousands of years, incorporating the structure into the very fabric of their cultures, transforming the distinctly unfamiliar into something intimate. For fans of the film, Devil's Tower has been a site where they can share their experiences of the film with others and relive Roy's experiences through their own lens. The Close Encounters community frequently identify their passion for the film with Devil's Tower, adding another unique flavor to the legacy of Devil's Tower and creating a unique cultural intersection with prior indigenous and American cultures tied to the structure. Monty was um, hospitalized the first time on September 29th, 2019. So coming up on that anniversary date. And um, it was um, the scariest thing I've ever been through in my life. It's really hard to talk about Monty and his disease his terminal cancer. He had to have brain surgery and two days after he had brain surgery, uh, we met our son Gunnar at CSU to spend time with him before his birthday. He was an incredibly strong man. So being his caregiver, each day was a gift. He did everything that he could for himself all the way up until about three weeks before he passed. And I know he was in incredible pain the last few months of his life and he never, ever showed that. Living without money has been sad. There isn't a day that goes by and I don't think there ever will be that I don't miss him and love him. I'm grateful that he's no longer suffering, but I'm trying to heal, and I am healing, but I miss him every day. My hopes by going to Devil's Tower today will be healing. Hopefully I will get the feelings that my son Gunnar had when he made the visit. So I think it won't be sad, it will be healing. While Devil's Tower is an incredibly important monument for indigenous tribes, rock climbers, science fiction fans, and more, its importance is also evident on a smaller scale for many individuals, including myself. When my dad was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer, my whole world collapsed and continued to collapse over the next year. I love my dad more than anything in the whole world. One of the things he told me shortly before his diagnosis was, live while you're alive. When he first said that to me, I didn't think much of it, but after his diagnosis, that mantra began to carry a lot more meaning. The summer after my dad's diagnosis, I started to travel around the United States to see what the world had to offer. I went to some awe-inspiring locations. The Garden of the Gods, Arches National Park, Rocky Mountain National Park, the Gateway Arch, but none of them compared to my first trip to Devil's Tower that summer. There are very few things I remember as clearly as when I saw it for the first time after five hours of driving. 
It was so incredibly prominent among the rolling hills at its base. The closer I got, the more unbelievable Devil's Tower became. There's a distinct yet unfamiliar aura attached to it. One that you feel in the deepest parts of your being. One that you can't shake even if you'd like to. I wanted to stay there forever. And I know that Devil's Tower felt the same way about me. When I got home, I was so excited to show my dad some of the footage I captured while I was there, and he was so proud to see that I was doing what he told me to do, to live while I was alive. And at Devil's Tower, I had never felt more alive. My dad is gone now, and nothing has ever hurt more, and nothing ever will. But what brings me peace when I miss my dad is thinking about the time I spent at Devil's Tower and how happy he was for me when I was there. Which is why I wanted to bring my mother to Devil's Tower for her first time to see what it meant for her as we both adjusted to life without my dad. On the way to Devil's Tower, it was long. As we got closer, I was anticipating like coming around a curve and it would just pop out. So there was just excitement, um, happiness, just really looking forward to seeing it and didn't know what to expect when I saw it. When I first saw Devil's Tower, it was everything that I anticipated. Trying to grasp how this tower appears out of not necessarily nowhere, but it's just there. I was excited, very excited, wanting to get closer. The first sighting of it was at such a distance, I couldn't feel the magnitude of its height and depth. As we got closer to the tower, it like evolved into so much more colors, depth, definition. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just unbelievable. I felt the, the same things that my son did when he saw it, like a draw to it. You just want to keep looking at it and looking at it and it changes. As you hike around it, it, it changes. The appearance of it changes. The colors might be a little less or more defined. It has like a green sage hue to it because of the green and orange lichen. It's it's unreal. The tower was more than I imagined. Pictures don't do it justice for the feeling that I captured or, or, or embraced, which was a lot of different things at different times during viewing it and being around it. I would say that it was more than I thought it would ever be. I mean, anything in person is better than a photo. It's not a house of God. It's more simple than that. It might be the stars, the monument, the trees. It's always the same monument, the stars, the moon, and none of that ever changes over time. It's always the same and very, to me, very simple. It doesn't have to be complicated or when or just is. This trip to Devil's Tower, it was very healing for me and I hope so for my son. I wanted to identify what he felt. It did not disappoint in any way. I would visit it again and again. It just feels like it's changing, evolving. I mean, I embraced it for what it was, you know, walking around it, sitting and watching the sunset, the sunrise. It was wonderful. I feel blessed to have been able to do that and to share it with my son. I felt small. It felt so big, so powerful, but not in a scary way. Sometimes I felt silly around it. I thought it looked like somebody had taken Play-Doh and shoved it through the spaghetti maker like when your kids, or it looked like a giant paintbrush. But most of the time I was fascinated by its power and the spirituality around it and how the Native Americans believe that it is a sacred ground, and I believe that as well. 
it's so incredibly awesome. There's definitely a draw to it. The area triggered a lot of memories for me because I really haven't been out in the outdoors. The one thing that I do remember is the ponderosa pine and smelling the bark on the trees that smells like vanilla and remembering the first time that someone shared that with me and I shared that with my son. So it, it triggered memories around my husband, Monty, knowing that this was a good place for his memory to stay for both my son and I um, and being able to leave something behind for us to share again whenever, whenever we want to. He'll always be in our heart and now he'll always be at Devil's Tower. There simply isn't anything like Devil's Tower. Not just in terms of its imposing shape and magnitude, but also in terms of its importance to so many different people and cultures. Devil's Tower has reflected the identity of numerous perspectives, each with their own distinct interpretations. Yet they are all equally important in writing the story of Devil's Tower. These identities are what make Devil's Tower so special, and it is the only place in the world like it. When I miss my dad so much that it hurts, I go back to Devil's Tower, even if I can't physically be there. And now, hopefully my mom feels the same. He may not physically be here anymore, but I know that some piece of him does rest at Devil's Tower. The energy I felt my first time at the monument may have been unfamiliar at the time, but in hindsight, it was unmistakably familiar. It was the same energy I felt when I was around my dad. So wherever he is right now, I can be at peace knowing that some part of him will forever be at Devil's Tower, where the earth meets the stars. Thank you.